Qin Shen was the CEO of Qin's company, with a unique vision and ruthless methods. He was an entrepreneur who scared countless people and a dream lover who made countless people flock to him. Only Gu Yuan knew that this man was just a small soft bag that cried from childhood to adulthood, a pitiful little one that would shatter with just one blow. It is also the only one that Gu Yuan has been secretly in love with for many years. She loves his exceptional intelligence in creating the immortal myth of the business world, and also sympathizes with his loneliness between his eyebrows. This time when she returned, as the chief secretary, she fiercely pushed him as the CEO to the corner and said, When Qin Shen was here, you had no choice but me. Asterisk Qin Shen, who was forced to the corner of the wall, Gu Yuan, you have always been my single choice. No one has ever walked into my heart except for you. Asterisk bilateral crush slash childhood sweetheart slash broken mirror reunion keywords of the novel. Clear and dark pets with no pop-ups, full collection download of clear and dark pets txt, latest chapter reading of clear and dark pets. Chapter 1. His loss of control. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 His loss of control scratch it. The document holder on the office desk was swept open by the man's powerful arm, revealing a clean desktop. At this moment, the man finally became distracted by Gu Yuan's intentional temptation. His breathing was rapid, and he hugged Gu Yuan and placed him on the cold desk. Who would have thought that his secretary, who always looks well-dressed, steady and beautiful in his work, would wear a shirt with a wide open back under that beautiful navy blue suit? The man's rough fingers rubbed against Gu Yuan's smooth and tender skin, and his voice was low and hoarse. He deliberately leaned against the woman's pearl like earlobes to blow air, saying, I've learned a lot since going abroad for a few years, haven't I? Gu Yuan's almond eyes narrowed slightly, and she deliberately drew eyeliner to show her charm. Her facial features were bright, her royal sister's appearance was proper, and her makeup was gorgeous and affectionate. She smiled gracefully, and her slender fingers nodded in front of the man's chest, saying, I have learned more than that. Does Mr. Qin still want to learn and learn? The man's face darkened, and he could no longer restrain himself from biting down at the red lips that were as angry as orchids. It's biting. It's not a kiss. Gu Yuan felt as if she had subdued a fierce beast on her body, tearing and biting at her lips to vent her anger. Biting made her feel pain. But Gu Yuan's lips curved slightly and he smiled low. The man looked up at Gu Yuan's seductive and charming eyes, feeling a bit displeased. What are you laughing at? I was thinking, Mr. Qin, are you treating every secretary like this? Gu Yuan pouted, sounding dissatisfied. Although they play pretty, they still like clean men, the man's voice was low. Dry, clean, a little bit. Gu Yuan blinked his eyes and said sincerely, that's right. When those eyes first seduced him, they were even more charming than a nine-tailed fox. This meeting started to pretend to be pure, almonds with round eyes, surprisingly pure and cute like a deer. This woman is really despicable. The man stood up and suddenly lifted the woman up with his hand, sneering, Gu Yuan, you left eight years ago. Now that you're back, do you still want to ask me to defend myself like a jade for you? He grabbed the scattered navy blue suit with his long arm and placed it on the shoulder of the woman sitting at the desk. The sun had set early, and now only the sunset was still lingering in the sky. The light of the sunset shone through the half-closed blinds, making the room somewhat dim. Only by getting closer can one see the beautiful appearance of a woman. Her curled hair became a bit messy in the tug of the moment, and scattered hair scattered in her ears, adding a touch of lazy beauty to her. The last time I saw her eight years ago, she was still wearing a cheap school uniform, with her hair tied up in a meticulous ponytail and clear eyes. Now she is wearing a secretary's uniform, and her white shirt has been replaced by an shameless hollow back. Why is her figure so good? Even an ordinary hip wrap skirt that reached the middle of her thighs could be so captivated by her. The light black stockings had just been cut a long crack by his suit button, and these long legs were the most revealing charm. 
she was plundering his breath almost every minute of her life. Qin Shen's gaze slowly moved away from Gu Yuan's leg and onto the small face as big as a palm. Gu Yuan really grows every inch of his body up and down according to his heart. Qin Shen sneered and turned his head away, not looking at Gu Yuan again. Pick up all the files. Gu Yuan tilted her head and looked at the scattered documents on the ground. She is a thoughtful and good secretary even if the boss gets angry and throws away the documents, she must obediently pick them all up. Not only did she pick it up, but she also sorted and put away the documents, flipped through the planning book that Qin Shen had just read halfway through, and put all the pens in the pen holder. She only held the pen that Qin Shen had been using since childhood and placed it next to the documents. After the planning book was signed and signed, she had to distribute it to the department. After Gu Yuan tidied up, she obediently stood aside, tidied up her clothes, and let go of her hair before coiling it up again. Before the last glimmer of the sunset was exhausted, Qin Shenshir sat back in the CEO's office. Gu Yuan obediently turned on the lights in the office, and the whole room instantly lit up. Just now, the ambiguous and affectionate atmosphere inside the room was swept away. If it weren't for Gu Yuan's stocking still being torn, Qin Shen almost thought it was because he accidentally took a nap and had an inappropriate spring dream. Qin Shen continued to look at the documents with a cold face, and after signing them, he put them aside without calling Gu Yuan. As the chief secretary of Qin Shen, Gu Yuan knew everything about him, even if he only got this job for a month. Gu Yuan was about to take the document, but her footstep stopped and she turned around, then walked towards the sofa over there. Then she slowly took off her 8 cm high heels, with a dark red border on the sole that looked very nice, but the shoe body was completely black. If it weren't for her lifting her foot, no one would have noticed. Oh, it's really naughty. Qin Shinshir's gaze suddenly withdrew and he continued to read the documents with a calm mind. Then the woman on the sofa began to slowly take off the black stockings that had been snagged her legs were impolitely placed on the coffee table, and her fluorescent white hands began to caress her thighs. She was already taking them off slowly, but she even took them off one leg at a time, even slower. Sliding from her thighs to her calves, and then to the tip of the woman's toes, finally revealing her long and large leg in full. Then he took off the other one as usual. Qin Shen snorted in frustration, and the seductive secretary was finally able to leave. But it's not over. Gu Yuan surprisingly took out a new pair of stockings from her suit pocket. It's still grey. The new cooperation proposal in front of Qin Shen is still on the first page. He almost stared a hole in this collaboration case with his eyes. Grey stockings. This woman is really intentionally seducing him. We also prepared spare ones. In the afternoon, when delivering documents, he deliberately or unintentionally teased him. His Qin family has always forbidden perfume. Today, the woman dared to secretly spray perfume and looked at him like that. He he, I've been seducing him for a month now. Today, she finally got the sweetness. He couldn't help but press her onto his desk and kiss her just now. He finally stabilized himself, what else does this woman want? Still here, taking off and wearing. She can't have a second backup, can she? Gu Yuan over there finally changed it, and she didn't keep the stockings she had replaced. She threw them directly into the trash can in the office. Then he put on his shoes and came over to pick up the documents. The faint aroma dissipated in front of Qin Shinshir in a flash. Asterisk after returning from abroad to work for a month, Gu Yuan still couldn't find a suitable and desirable house, and could only temporarily stay in a hotel next to the company. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Her Obstruction. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 Her Obstruction Back in the presidential suite of the hotel, Gu Yuan didn't immediately take a bath and rest. She didn't even turn on the light. She stretched out her hair, kicked away her shoes with her feet, and went barefoot to sit on the ground beside the French window. 
In front of me is the building of Chin's Enterprise, located in the tallest office building in the city center. It was almost nine o'clock now, and the neon lights in the entire city were flickering. Only Gu Yuan sat alone in the dark room. She was no longer as radiant as she was during the day, and had ulterior motives. She looked a bit lost in thought. She hung her head slightly, her long hair hanging down to her waist. From her perspective, one can see the tall man walking out of the building of Qin's enterprise. Even though it was so far away and the person was a little smaller, she could still tell at a glance that it was Qin Shen. During Qin Shen's time, he was the hottest single man in H City and the only heir to the Qin family, a top tycoon in Beijing. At the age of only 20, he independently founded QY Capital in H City. However, after eight years, QY Capital has now become one of the largest companies in the industry, with an estimated market value of over 5 billion yuan. His personal abilities are so strong, and his background in the Qin family is even more top notch. The Qin group has almost terrifying occupying power in various fields, and the capital empire with a total market value of over 100 billion is about to fall into the hands of this young man. Qin Shen, who occasionally appears on magazine pages, has a figure and handsomeness that can make everyone flock to him. His deep and calm gaze just lightly falls on you, which is enough to make people think of crossing the Milky Way for thousands of years. But only Gu Yuan knew. This man is very fragile and still a crybaby. Suddenly, a white luxury car appeared in sight, parked steadily in front of Qin Shinshu. A woman got off the car. Gu Yuan's eyebrows furrowed slightly. Yes, at a glance, ten thousand years. Her gaze is timeless, with deep affection. But his gaze is not hers. A man and a woman talked for a while, and it seemed like the man was about to get into the woman's car. Gu Yuan took out the phone from his suit pocket, pressed the shortcut key, and the phone was dialed to the man. Qin Shen's expression was faint when he was bending down to get into the car when his phone suddenly rang. It's this ringtone. Qin Shen straightened up and answered the phone with a normal expression. Hmm. Okay. Qin Shen hung up the phone. Qi Qin Ming asked, What's wrong? Whose phone is it? She approached the man to see whose phone it was, but the man held his hand in the opposite direction covering the screen of the phone and placing it in his pocket without leaving any trace. Qi Qingming didn't look. I can't go to the Qi family with you tonight. Say hello to my uncle for me, Qin Shen said calmly. Qi Qingming was slightly stunned. This is already the fourth time she invited Qin Shen to her house for dinner this month. She specifically drove to the downstairs of Qin's enterprise to pick him up, but she didn't want to give him another chance to refuse. Qin Shinshu finally let go, but was interrupted by a sudden phone call. Qi Qingming couldn't help but ask again, what's wrong? There is an important document that needs to be checked tonight, Qin Shen said. During the day, the secretary forgot to submit it. The newly recruited secretary is so unreliable. Do you want to replace him? Qi Qingming's face looked a bit ugly Qin Shen's gaze lightly turned to Qi Qingming. He dislikes being disturbed or asked about his work matters the most. Qi Qingming knew she had crossed the line and hurriedly said, then you should work. Work is important. However, after finishing work, remember to eat and take care of yourself. Qin Shen gave a faint nod and then turned back to the Qin family building. Standing in place, Qi Qingming tightly pursed her lips. Qin Shen only found out when she changed her secretary. It's okay if I used to be a male secretary, but the latest one I found is actually a female secretary. She looked down on Qin Shen the most when there were other women beside her, after all, this man was her fiancé A. But Qin Shen detested her interfering in his work the most. This matter needs further deliberation. Just like before, she quietly drove away all the women around him. Asterisk seeing the woman downstairs getting on the car alone and leaving, Gu Yuan finally smiled faintly at the corner of her lips. Who is that woman? 
Who else can there be besides Qin Shen's beloved fiancé A.E. Qi Qingming? Qi Qingming was the fiancé A.E. of Qin Shen. Two childhood sweethearts, Lang Qingxie Yi. What is she? Gu Yuan felt his heart tingling with pain like needles. The self-proclaimed spring hearts that she had when she was young, the memories that she regarded as precious treasures, and the thoughts that she thought Qin Shen had a good impression of herself when she was young, were just the unknown imagination of passers-by be in the love story between Qi Qin Ming and Qin Shen. She was just a background board. How could a proud son of heaven be as tempted by a cook's daughter as in a fairy tale? Gu Yuan set aside the thoughts in her mind. After a while, he called Qin Shenshu and said, I'm sorry, Mr. Qin. I remember the wrong time. It won't be too late to process that document tomorrow. Qin Shen was not as angry as she had imagined, only let out a faint sigh. Gu Yuan hung up the phone. Asterisk the next day. Gu Yuan arrived at the company early, brewed coffee for Qin Shenshu in the tea room, and then brought it into the office. When she opened the door, she felt a strange smell. Mr. Qin. Gu Yuan looked at Qin Shen sitting upright in the office in shock. He was clearly still wearing the same clothes as yesterday, and his face looked a bit pale, not even cleaning his stubble. He didn't go home all night. Look at those dark circles under your eyes. You should have stayed up late, and there's a pile of cigarette butts scattered on the coffee table next to you. Gu Yuan. You didn't go home last night. Qin Shen nodded. Gu Yuan frowned as she picked up the coffee before it was placed on Qin Shen's table. Qin Shen frowned as he felt a headache from drowsiness and needed coffee. Put it down, he said Gu Yuan said coldly, staying up late and drinking coffee, Mr. Qin, do you think your life is too long? Gu Yuan ignored Qin Shen's dissatisfaction behind her and poured out the coffee as soon as she left. When he came back again, Gu Yuan held a dinner plate with green vegetables, small white kanji, a small dish of vegetables, and then a cup of tea. Qin Shen said coldly, what does that mean? Is this an office or a cafeteria? As the General Secretary of President Qin, I have the obligation to take care of President Qin's daily life and your health. Gu Yuan put the dinner plate on the table Qin Shen, who was originally sitting on the office chair, suddenly erupted and pulled Gu Yuan into his arms. With a restrained tone, he said, Take care of my food, drink, and daily life. Take care of my physical health. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 The Work of the General Secretary, 1. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 The Work of the General Secretary, 1. He has a strong smell of tobacco on his body. I held the person I had been thinking about all night in my arms, but the other person didn't seduce me as seductively as yesterday. Instead, I was a bit angry and reached out to pick him up, dragging him to the small room in the office where I used to rest. Standing in front of the wash basin, Gu Yuan turned on the faucet, pressing his head down with one hand and pouring a handful of cold water onto his face with the other. Qin Shen closed his eyes with some displeasure. That little hand started washing his face. Gu Yuan's voice sounded a bit gritted at the moment, do you think it counts? After washing his face, Gu Yuan skillfully shaved his beard. Qin Shen pursed his lips in displeasure and let Gu Yuan play with them, his pitch black eyes reflecting Gu Yuan's well dot dressed appearance. She was wearing a beige silk shirt today, with smooth fabric sticking to her body. Following the movements of her hands, the clothes pressed tightly and her beautiful figure was clearly visible. He he, try to seduce him in a different way. Qin Shen snorted, and the foam on his mouth was blown open a small hole. Gu Yuan is cold and takes a scraper to scrape away the foam. Shaving Qin Shen's beard doesn't count. Gu Yuan opened the wardrobe in the small room, which contained a row of shirts, a row of suits, and a row of trousers, all custom dot made for luxury. She took a quick look and found a set of clothes from it, putting it in Qin Shenshu's hand. Put it on. Qin Shen's schedule today is not easy. 
There is a department meeting in the morning and a collaboration discussion in the afternoon. There are so many occasions to meet people, it's nice to see him sleep in the office without changing his clothes. When Gu Yuan was angry, her eyes widened round, like a stuffed squirrel, cute enough to be pinched. Qin Shen raised his eyebrows slightly, took his clothes, and honestly put them on. Then Gu Yuan took out a bottle of perfume and sprayed it on Qin Shen. Qin Shen's face turned cold and he said, Why? Cover up your taste. Gu Yuan said coldly. Qin Shen's face turned even colder. As soon as he reached out and pinched Gu Yuan's chin, he deliberately leaned in front of her and said, Do you dislike me? Gu Yuan met Qin Shen's eyes, but her tone was not soft. I dare not. Qin Shen let go at that moment. Gu Yuan pulls open the large cabinet next to the perfume cabinet and picks a dark blue tie from it. Tie Qin Shen with a tie. When Qin Shen lowered his head, he saw the woman's soft and fair neck, weak like a lamb. At the last step of tying a tie, Gu Yuan tightened her tie tightly and looked up with a round almond eye, saying, Let's eat. Qin Shen followed out. Xiao Bai Kanji is just right now. While eating it, Gu Yuan turns on the air purifier and cleans up the scattered cigarette butts and ashes on the table. The CEO's office is a very confidential place, and cleaners are not allowed to enter for cleaning. The usual hygiene is also cleaned by Gu Yuan in the morning. Gu Yuan swept all her cigarette butts into the trash can, and as she was throwing away the garbage bag, she suddenly thought of something and frowned slightly. She remembers not cleaning the trash when she left yesterday. Why wasn't the stockings she threw away yesterday in the trash bag? Now the garbage bag contains the cigarette but that Qin Shen smoked last night. Asterisk returning to Qin Shen's office. Gu Yuan finally nodded in satisfaction. The air was clean and clear, and Qin Shen, who was sitting at her desk, finally regained her former handsomeness after being cleaned up by her. After finishing the dishes and throwing them away, Gu Yuan began to report today's schedule to Qin Shenshi. After Qin Shenshi nodded to confirm, Gu Yuan quickly passed on the message and prepared for the meeting. The morning meeting is a summary of January's work. Gu Yuan sat next to Qin Shen and started shorthand mode. She grabbed the pen with three fingers and quickly recorded on the paper. Qin Shen gave Gu Yuan a faint glance. The way Gu Yuan writes is still no different from when she was a child. The characters are written as dragons flying and phoenixes dancing, and even though they are as ugly as dogs crawling, they still insist on learning from him. Where is his handwriting so ugly? However, it was not Gu Yuan at that time. At that time, Gu Yuan did his homework in a straight line. Now, Gu Yuan is very lazy in taking shorthand, and some words are replaced with English words. Then English was not the famous XX style practiced by Gu Yuan, a good student at that time. It was so smooth that the grading teacher felt comfortable and beautiful. Now, she writes English words very elegantly, and it's clear that she has been abroad for a long time. Gu Yuan is also very serious when working. Listen attentively, occasionally look up at the PowerPoint, and then record the key points on paper. Mr. Qin. What do you think? The reporting manager stopped to report and looked at Qin Shen. But Mr. Qin, who has always been indifferent and focused on his work, surprisingly did not have his gaze on the reporting side, but instead turned his head to look at his secretary. As everyone's gaze converged on Qin Shen, Gu Yuan finally finished the key points and waited to record Qin Shen's speech, while the people around him remained silent. Her eyes lit up with confusion as she looked up at Qin Shen. Qin Shen only realized when he met Gu Yuan's eyes. He had a cold expression on his face and sneered, Did you do all this 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 week? The manager trembled and lowered his head, waiting to be scolded. But Qin, who has always been scolding people without being soft-lipped, just said coldly, next. The manager was taken aback for a moment, then quickly stepped down as if granted amnesty. After stepping down, the manager's assistant quietly asked, Manager, why didn't you get criticized this time? 
The manager shook his head in confusion and looked at Mr. Qin, who seemed to be listening attentively to his job report, but in fact, Yu Guangxuan was looking at his secretary. How does he feel that Mr. Qin doesn't just curse, it's because he didn't listen carefully and doesn't know how to curse. The departmental meeting has finally come to an end. The speed of this departmental meeting is somewhat unbelievable, because Mr. Qin was the most nitpicking in the past. The monthly departmental meeting will not end without scolding each department thoroughly. Mr. Qin appeared to be cold and sarcastic this time, but in fact, he didn't pick out many people's mistakes, which made managers from various departments feel that the weather today is inexplicably better. After the meeting, Gu Yuan also sorted out the meeting minutes as soon as possible. She rubbed her slightly sore hands. Although I have long been accustomed to this intensity of work, every meeting is still the most tiring. After simply wiping the hand cream, Gu Yuan submitted the meeting report to Qin Shinshu. Mr. Qin, this is the meeting minutes for the morning. Qin Shen didn't look up or speak. Gu Yuan placed the report on the table. What would Mr. Qin like to have for lunch? Gu Yuan asked. Qin Shen said, whatever. Gu Yuan nodded and went downstairs to the cafeteria to fetch food for Qin Shenshu. When Qin Shen was busy with work, he couldn't even afford to eat when he was busy. He often took care of his meal and drank coffee as food. After taking over this month, Gu Yuan will go to the cafeteria on time every day to cook for Qin Shenshu. At first, Qin Shen sneered and ignored. After eating on time, Qin Shen also felt hungry and uncomfortable when he reached the point. Occasionally, he would tell Gu Yuan in advance what he wanted to eat and ask the cafeteria to make an extra dish. End of this chapter Chapter 4 The Work of the General Secretary Two. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4. The work of the General Secretary. 2. Gu Yuan brought up the food and as soon as she stepped into the first floor of the CEO's office, she felt that the atmosphere around her was a bit off. At this point, other secretaries were all thinking about what to have for lunch and preparing for their lunch break, but today they were all trembling and still at their posts without whispering. What's wrong? Gu Yuan, as the chief secretary, still had to inquire about the appearance of the people under his command. The secretary Xiao Lian, who was closest to the door, said two words in Gu Yuan's ear. Gu Yuan felt a chill in her body and her heart seemed to be blocked, feeling suffocated and uncomfortable. Miss Yuan. Xiao Lian saw that Gu Yuan's face suddenly changed, thinking that she was a little nervous because she had met Qi Qingming for the first time. He quickly comforted her, Miss Yuan, don't worry. Miss Qi is the daughter of Mr. Qi and seems to have some connection with Mr. Qin's family. It's probably the same as before. She stopped by to see Mr. Qin. However, Miss Qi seemed to have brought Zhu Xian Xian's food when she came. This means that she doesn't need to go in again to deliver food to Mr. Qin. Gu Yuan lowered her eyes and looked at the meal she had prepared for Qin Shen in the cafeteria. Even though Qin's food is already considered the most delicious among major enterprises, it still cannot be compared to the first restaurant in H City, Juxiangxuan. Gu Yuan nodded and said, Okay. She raised her voice again and said, It's almost time for lunch break. After you finish your work, go eat early. Upon receiving the order from the general secretary, the other secretaries breathed a sigh of relief and quickly got up to say goodbye to eating with Gu Yuan, hoping to leave this floor early. Every time Qi Qingming comes, they feel a bit uncomfortable. Qi Qingming is also a lady from a prestigious family, with a demeanor and etiquette similar to that of a fairy, but her gentle gaze always makes people feel a bit chilly. After all, they are Mr. Qi's daughter and have such a good relationship with the CEO. In front of her, they must pretend to work hard and work hard. When Gu Yuan spoke, the secretary's office area suddenly turned into scattered birds and animals, leaving only Xiao Lian to ask Gu Yuan again, Miss Yuan, do you want to go down to eat together? Gu Yuan shook her head and raised the rice in her hand, saying, I'll eat. Okay, Xiao Lian smiled and left. 
Gu Yuan returned to her seat. Her workstation is right outside the CEO's office. In a while, Qi Qingming will definitely be the first to see her when she comes out. Gu Yuan's gaze turned to the heavy door in the office. The sound insulation in the CEO's office was good, and she couldn't hear what the people inside were saying. When Qi Qingming and Qin Shen were childhood sweethearts, they must have been very gentle with their own green plums, let alone Qi Qingming who appeared to be such a gentle and beautiful person. What is she when the beautiful woman feeds inside? Gu Yuan looked at the rice she had cooked. Qin Shen used to love eating beef, and today the cafeteria also fried celery and shredded beef. After finishing her meal in the cafeteria, she picked out all the celery bit by bit, and now there is only meat in the bowl without any celery. But she really likes to eat celery. Now the bowl is filled with Qin Shen's favorite beef shreds. Gu Yuan poked the food in the bowl with chopsticks, and the iron chopsticks hit the bottom of the bowl, making a sound of miso. Meat is also delicious. Just as Gu Yuan buried her head and took a bite of food, the office door opened from inside. The sound of a woman's high heels is crisp. Gu Yuan didn't look up and focused on eating. Qi Qingming looked at the man outside the office with concern on her face and couldn't forget, Shen Shi, how can we not eat? She was still carrying Ju Xian Xian's packing box in her hand. Ju Xiangxuan is in another direction, and Qi Qingming specifically went to buy it for Qin Shen Shi. Qin Shen stood at the door with a faint expression and an unhappy tone. Qi Qingming, I have said many times not to come to the Qin family. Faced with the man's frank indifference, Qi Qingming bit her lip and said, Today is when my dad can't come, I came on his behalf. Qin Shen remained silent. But the expression on the man's face, rushing guests, was completely undisguised. Qi Qingming had no choice but to say, That's all for business, I. I'm leaving. She turned around and her gaze fell on Gu Yuan, but he never looked up and kept burying his head in eating. At first glance, he was very stingy and lacked the demeanor of a socialite. The unease in Qi Qingming's heart dissipated for two minutes. When Qin Shen was young, he definitely wouldn't have taken a liking to such a tasteless woman. Also, due to Qin Shen standing at the door, Qi Qingming didn't have a chance to talk to Gu Yuan and left directly. The annoying sound of high heels disappeared into the elevator. Gu Yuan still didn't look up. But suddenly a shadow fell over my head. Gu Yuan ignored. Secretary Gu. The man's faint voice came from above. Gu Yuan put down her chopsticks, looked up, and smiled sweetly. Mr. Qin, Qin Shen looked at the rice that had been eaten with a gap and said, Where's my lunch? Gu Yuan blinked and pointed to the rice bowl in front of her, saying, Miss Qi has come specifically to deliver food to Mr. Qin. I think Mr. Qin doesn't need the food from my secretary anymore. Qin Shen let out a hee hee and grabbed the bucket in front of Gu Yuan with his long arm, entering the office. Gu Yuan only took two bites of rice. She worked hard all morning, and without replenishing her energy in a timely manner, she couldn't do well. Qin Shen already had a meal delivered by Qi Qingming when he was young. Why do you still come to grab her food? Just now when Qi Qingming arrived, she felt a bit unhappy in her heart. Now that her job has been ruined by Qin Shenzhi, she is even more unhappy. Gu Yuan stood up immediately. The 8 cm high heel she was wearing stomped fiercely on the ground, making a loud noise, especially evident in the silent CEO's office floor where even a needle could be heard falling to the ground. Gu Yuan was so angry that her teeth were itching. She didn't knock on the door and opened the office door directly. Just as she was about to discuss with Qin Shen, she saw that, Qin Shen sat on the sofa, picked up chopsticks, and began to eat her food. It is imagined that the delicacies brought by Qi Qin Ming in the office do not exist. Qin Shen's customized high.end tea table in the office was shabbily equipped with half a plate of shredded beef and half a plate of dry fried Chinese cabbage, a bowl of tomato and egg soup, and a plate of rice. 
Gu Yuan had eaten a small corner of rice, and the surface of the rice was still clear of oil. This is all the food that Gu Yuan just looted and brought back from the cafeteria. Qin Shen's eyes were cold as he said, What's up with Secretary Gu? Speaking, he picked up a piece of shredded beef and put it in his mouth. Gu Yuan thought to herself, If you don't eat properly, be careful not to feed it into your nose. She changed her face in Sichuan opera and smiled apologetically, Is Mr. Qin enough to eat one meal? Do you need me to go and make an extra one? Compared to before, it's two pounds less than before, Qin Shen said, but if it's one or two bites less, it'll be like feeding the overlord. It's okay. There's no need to fight anymore. Overlord. Qin Shen raised a dog at home when he was a child. Gu Yuan clenched her fist. Mr. Qin, use it slowly. Gu Yuan left hungry and went downstairs to the cafeteria to eat alone. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 The Work of the General Secretary, 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 The Work of the General Secretary, 3 After lunch, Qin Shenshi took a shower and changed into the suit set that Gu Yuan had selected for him in the morning. He looked back and forth in front of the mirror several times before Qin Shinshir walked out of the lounge door. In the office, Gu Yuan maintained a graceful smile and calmly looked up and down at Qin Shen, feeling satisfied. This was the shining little Mr. Qin who quickly killed the entire male CEO of the Shanghai market, Mr. Qin, can we start now? Qin Shen nodded. He took a big step, walking calmly and steadily, and Gu Yuan's heart moved slightly, following closely behind. When she helped Qin Shen, she held a business bag and a document in her hand. Mr. Qin, this is the latest bidding proposal provided by the planning department. On the car, talk in detail, Qin Shen whispered. The two walked out of the Qin family's door together. After getting on the bus, Gu Yuan explained the latest bidding plan again, trying to pick up the modified key points and speaking in concise and powerful language, summarizing it very well. Qin Shen's elbow was resting on the car window, and his palm turned into a fist pressing against his temple, making him feel drowsy. Since Gu Yuan arrived, his body has become delicate. He needs to eat three good meals a day and get enough sleep. He only stayed up late and had to take a nap to make up for it. Gu Yuan stopped talking. Within two minutes, Qin Shen fell asleep. Gu Yuan looked at the time and found that it was only 1.30 p.m. now. There was still less than half an hour left to reach the Blue Deep building. The appointment with the Blue Deep group was 2.30 p.m., so Qin Shen sure could rest for a while. The car was equipped with a slightly cold air conditioning, and Gu Yuan took out a small blanket from the nearby dark compartment and covered Qin Shenshir's body. The man's profile was calm, and as he closed his eyes, he showed a gentle posture, just like a boy who used to complain when he was a child. Gu Yuan withdrew her gaze and her heart softened slightly. But within two seconds, Qin Shen collapsed into her arms. The headrest was resting on her lap, and she rubbed it comfortably. This person didn't fall asleep and deliberately leaned against her. Gu Yuan reached out to help him up, but heard the man say low, don't move. He seemed to have found a comfortable position and didn't move. The man's hair was quite hard, and he felt a slight prick on her leg when he fell on it. This slight itch seemed to rub against Gu Yuan's heart, so she let him go. Qin Shen didn't sleep for long and woke up one minute before the car arrived at the Blue Deep building. With a foul expression on his face, he lifted the blanket covering his body and said, I'm not a child. Gu Yuan glanced at him and said, Mr. Qin, there are still some unfinished new bidding proposals. Let's go over it all again, Qin Shen said lightly. Gu Yuan explained it to Qin Shen Shi again as quickly as possible. Actually, there aren't too many changes. Qin's company has set their sights on a piece of land by the seaside in Shanghai and wants to use it to build a seaside resort. However, Qin's construction in this field is not deep enough, and it is slightly inferior to other bidders in this area alone. 
Chin wants to cooperate with the best developed Blue Deep group in this area, and the two companies will work together to win this piece of land. However, it seems that Lan Shen is not interested enough. Asterisk, I understand Mr. Chin's idea, but Blue Deep has already implemented two major projects recently. The man in a deep cyan suit was mature and steady, and the expression on Blue Yuan's face was indifferent and distant, not caring about the identity and status of the crown prince of the Qin family. In the entire Shanghai market, perhaps only the man in front of him can challenge Qin Xinxia. The status of the Blue family is not lower than that of the Qin family. The Qin family's industry is in the north, while the Blue family is the hegemon in the south. The family has a strong influence, and when they hear about black and white, almost no one dares to provoke them. When Qin Shen came to Shanghai to establish QY Capital, he also passed in front of the Blue family. Lan Yuan in front of him is the third son of the Lan family. Now, the head of the Lan Shen group, almost all the hotel catering in Shanghai is related to Lan Shen. After Gu Yuan finished talking about the cooperation plan, she heard Lan Yuan say this and felt a slight sinking in her heart. It was because Lan Shen Group had been reluctant to let go, and the project team had already offered an additional 5 percentage points from the initial plan. Unexpectedly, Lan Shen Group was so calm, and she had no choice but to look at Qin Shen. Qin Shen crossed his legs and relaxed his posture, saying, Mr. Lan is not satisfied with the cooperation plan of the Qin Group. I have also prepared a copy of QY Capital here. Lan Yuan raised his eyebrows slightly and said, Oh. Gu Yuan was slightly stunned at the words. QY Capital's cooperation case. Why doesn't she know? Gu Mi, Qin Shen said lightly. Gu Yuan said, Oh, and then opened her briefcase. There was indeed a new planning proposal inside, which she had never seen before. She handed the cooperation proposal to Lan Yuan's secretary. Opening the cooperation case, Lan Yuan's eyebrows furrowed slightly, as if he was a bit skeptical. Mr. Qin's sincerity makes me feel a bit scared, said Lan Yuan Dao. Qin Shen's face remained unchanged and he said, It seems that Mr. Lan is very satisfied with this cooperation case. Lan Yuan smiled lightly and said, If that's the case, if I refuse again, it's a bit of a loss of face for Mr. Qin. According to the contract, QY Capital is willing to contribute up to 60%, but they only receive less than 30% of the equity. Excluding the official holding of 55%, if Blue Deep Group cooperates with QY Capital, it can be almost said that they will receive the largest profit with the least amount of investment. I'm afraid a fool wouldn't want to sign such a cooperation case. Is it really something that the people in front of you can do for free? Lan Yuan was curious and said, why is Mr. Qin so persistent about that piece of land? There are also places in Shanghai that are better and more suitable for building resorts than there. Qin Shen said, personal preferences. Mr. Qin is grand. Asterisk until the contract was signed, Gu Yuan was still confused. Qin Shen walked steadily, but Gu Yuan almost couldn't keep up. She was full of doubts and before she could ask the other person, she sneered coldly, Secretary Gu, can you change your 8 cm high heels? Gu Yuan is already tall, with a net height of 172. After putting on high heels, she approaches 1.8 meters, only half a head behind Qin Shen. Mr. Qin doesn't like it. Gu Yuan stretched her neck forward, and Qin Shen stopped to wait for her to slightly tilt her head. The two people's faces were instantly very close, almost able to feel each other's breathing. Gu Yuan was not scared and did not forget the seductive secretary's original intention. Her thick eyelashes blinked. Gu Yuan's eyes were bright and his pupils were black and transparent. Qin Shen pursed his lips and quickly turned his head to say, Secretary Gu, please pay attention to your appearance outside. When Qin Shen finished speaking, he left. Gu Yuan followed behind him calmly. Very careful, I didn't smash Mr. Qin's signboard. Qin Zongjuan is invincible, and there are people sneaking a peek across two floors of the Blue Deep Group. 
Gu Yuan also dressed up meticulously, her proud figure perfectly revealed, with a pair of comic legs stepping on slender high heels that were in an incredible proportion. When she walked by Qin Shen's side, their appearance and temperament matched perfectly, causing heartbreak among the fans of the Blue Deep group. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Old Acquaintance, 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Old Acquaintance, 1 Stepping out of the Blue Deep building, Gu Yuan hurriedly asked, Mr. Qin, did you anticipate that Lan Yuan would not agree to Qin's contract, so you prepared QY's contract in advance? Qin Shen nodded. Gu Yuan was puzzled and said, although that piece of land has great potential for profit, the conditions you offered are quite generous. It's not worth it at all. Qin Shen suddenly stopped in his tracks, the cold breath on his body making him silent. Mr. Qin. Gu Yuan blinked her eyes. Qin Shen's eyes were deep, and he paused in place to look at Gu Yuan for two or three minutes, which made Gu Yuan's heart furry. Qin Shen snorted coldly and turned his head before walking away. After getting on the car, the icy aura all over her body opened up, turning her head to ignore Gu Yuan. Gu Yuan held his hand slightly on the buttocks, not sure which sentence he had said that made Qin Shen dissatisfied. The journey was boring, and Gu Yuan carefully reviewed the contract again. That piece of land is in the southeast corner of the Shanghai market. She seems to have a slight impression, but that was already when she was in high school. Gu Yuan's remaining light quietly glanced at Qin Shen. He should have forgotten all about that time, right? When she was a child, she didn't have many hobbies and interests. She usually learned to draw by herself, and from elementary school to high school, she relied entirely on self.study. After entering high school, her drawing skills improved a lot and she was able to take on one or two business orders a month, earning thousands of yuan. The business order I received that time was to draw illustrations of landscapes and sea views. My family is not wealthy, and Gu Yuan has never been out of the province. When she was young, she lived in the countryside. As a child, she followed her mother to live with the Qin family, without the concept of holidays. Don't mention traveling to see the sea. What she is most familiar with is the uniform rose bushes in the Qin family garden. At that time, Gu Yuan had already prepared to search online for more seaside illustration photos and scenery as materials, and relied on her own imagination to create. But coincidentally, at that time, Qin Shen had a competition event that required him to come to the Shanghai Stock Exchange. Gu Yuan is very lucky, added to the accompanying list by Qin Shen. Because her mother is the cook of the Qin family, and she is the daughter of the cook, her status in the Qin family is equivalent to that of a maid when Qin Shen was a young master. When the young master goes on a long journey, it is natural for the maids to accompany and take care of the young master in the eyes of the adults. That was Gu Yuan's first time on a long journey. This is also Gu Yuan's first time seeing the sea. The deep blue, distant, sea and skyline, like the vastness and tranquility of a dream. Her ears were filled with the surging tide of the sea. That is a beauty that Gu Yuan will never forget. If I remember correctly, she walked along the coastline all the way to the undeveloped coastline, where the waves were even more stunning. It was there that Gu Yuan sketched for the first time at the seaside and used her abilities to create an excellent illustration. Gu Yuan's lips curved slightly, and that painting was rated as the best illustration of the year by readers in the magazine at that time, with a prize money of a full thousand yuan. Asterisk the car did not return to the Qin family, but turned a corner and drove to the building of QY Capital. Qin Shen had a very special identity during his time. He is the crown prince of the Qin family enterprise, currently taking over the Qin family's industry in the Shanghai market. However, the QY capital he founded was not merged into the Qin family enterprise as a result. Instead, it was used as the private property of Qin Shen and invested in some projects that he was interested in. QY Capital, as a new generation force in the Shanghai Stock Exchange, has occupied a place in the market after years of development. 
Its geographical location is also excellent, just three kilometers away from the Qin family and even closer to the sea. Standing on the 20th floor, outside the window is the best stand to enjoy the beautiful scenery of the confluence of the river and sea in the Shanghai Stock Exchange. At this moment, it coincides with sunset, and it is half river and half river red. It is another kind of beauty of rivers and seas. Gu Yuan was brought here by Qin Shen for the first time. The former secretary mentioned during the handover of work with Gu Yuan that although the position of recruiting a secretary was issued by Qin, there are actually some official affairs of QY Capital that require the secretary's help to handle. On QY Capital's side, there is an equally excellent female secretary working for Qin Shen. When she saw the female secretary, Gu Yuan was slightly stunned. The other party was also pleasantly surprised. Qin Shenzhi said, Secretary Gu, please hand over the contract just signed with Lanshan Group to Qin Shao. The follow-up implementation will be carried out by QY Capital. After speaking, he entered the office. Fu Qing over there nodded solemnly one second before smiling, and then his eyebrows and eyes curved with a smile. Ignoring the approach of others, he gave Gu Yuan a big hug. When he spoke, he even put on two tears and said, Yuan Yuan, you can be considered. Back. Gu Yuan didn't expect that Fu Qing Xiao would be working with Qin Shen at QY Capital now, and that the reunion between herself and Fu Qing Xiao could happen at such a time. Fu Qing smiled as her name suggests, with a cute baby face. Even in her mature secretary uniform, she couldn't conceal her childish and cute aura, especially beside Gu Yuan, who was full of femininity and tall, which further highlighted her petite and cute height of 1.63 meters. Fu Qingxiao's head fiercely buried in Gu Yuan's chest. Very good. It seems that Gu Yuan has not endured hardship abroad in recent years, and it is even easier to bury here than before. Gu Yuan couldn't help but laugh. She was about the same age as Fu Qingxiao, but their behavior was always the same as that of a little sister. At this moment, the other members of the secretariat quietly and curiously looked over, their gossiping eyes scanning up and down on both of them. Gu Yuan had no choice but to pull Fu Qingxiao aside to the conference room and close the door for a chat. All right, let go. Gu Yuan smiled and grabbed the other person's hand, which was like a child holding the corner of her clothes. Fu Qingxiao looked at Gu Yuan with a serious tone and said, Gu Yuan, are you doing well? She had many problems in her heart, but in the end, the only thing she expressed her greatest concern was this one. Gu Yuan nodded and said, of course. In the third year of high school, I received the only full scholarship from the school and was recommended to study abroad, entering the top 30 universities in the world. For a girl like her from an average background, it can already be considered an extremely good way out. Fu Qing smiled and looked carefully at Gu Yuan, not missing any expression on her face, to confirm if the other person had spoken the truth. For a long time, she swallowed everything she had wanted to say before and picked up a smile again. It would be great to come back. In the future, in the Shanghai market, Fu Qing will cover you with a smile. Gu Yuan curved her lips and smiled lightly, nodding lightly. Fu Qingxiao is a young lady from the Fu family, her elder brother is a military officer, and the elders in the family hold high positions of power and status. The two of them got to know each other because of the opportunity during Qin Shen's time. When Fu Qingxiao and Qin Shen were studying at the same school, Gu Yuan met Fu Qingxiao while looking for Qin Shen. At that time, Fu Qingxiao was at a lively and playful age, very curious about the outside world. Faced with Gu Yuan from another school, she was full of love, and their personalities matched, so they played together. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Old Acquaintance, 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Old Acquaintance, 2 Fu Qing smiled and talked to Gu Yuan for a while, highlighting her experiences over the years. My grades are not good, and my older brother almost caught me and sent me to join the army. Fu Qingxiao made a frightened expression, where is the place where, 
such a petite girl, can stay in the army. Fortunately, Brother Chin pleaded with me. I just went to college casually, and later Brother Chin told me he wanted to start a business. I happened to have nothing to do, so I came to work as a secretary for Brother Chin. Most importantly, Fu Qingxiao's eyes turned and blinked at Gu Yuan. Gu Yuan couldn't understand his meaning, but smiled and said, So it seems that you have done a good job by Mr. Qin's side, and have become the chief secretary. Fu Qingxiao said, Brother Qin is still taking care of me. There are too many capable people in the group, this is necessary. The Fu family and the Qin family are friendly, and for Qin Xinxi, Fu Qingxiao is even half of his sister. Gu Yuan took out the bidding proposal in a timely manner and said, let's get down to business. Fu Qingxiao originally wanted to continue laughing, but at this moment, Gu Yuan's words choked up and her smile narrowed by seven points. Then she nodded and joked, okay, Secretary Gu. After all, it was still the daughter of the Fu family and a secretary who had been in the workplace for many years. Fu Qingxiao's workability did not disappoint Gu Yuan. The two quickly negotiated the details and exchanged contact information. The two had previously communicated, but they both sent files through public mail. Otherwise, Gu Yuan wouldn't have known until now that the person in charge of QY was Fu Qingxiao. After finishing the work here, Gu Yuan packed her things and was about to leave. Fu Qingxiao hesitated for a moment before finally speaking out, Yuan Yuan, let's have a meal together after work. Gu Yuan asked, is it today? Fu Qing nodded with a smile. After a long separation, of course, the sooner the better. Gu Yuan nodded and said, okay. Seeing Gu Yuan's graceful figure disappear from sight, Fu Qing smiled and lowered her eyelashes slightly. Why does she feel that the kite is very different from before? Do you always feel that she is a bit distant from her? Asterisk Gu Yuan knocked on the door and walked into the CEO's office. When Qin Shen heard the sound of these footsteps, he knew it was Gu Yuan who had returned. Is the handover over? Gu Yuan. Hmm, everything has been handed over. Qin Shinshir looked up from QY Capital's report, and upon seeing Gu Yuan, her expression relaxed and her lips slightly raised. She looked in a good mood, probably because she had just met Fu Qingxiao and was in a good mood. Qin Shen's mood inexplicably eased as he said, after cooperating with Lan Shen on this case, I should come here frequently in the future, and you should also come along. Gu Yuan nodded and said, but according to General Qin's orders. This work was also expected by Gu Yuan. Qin Shen nodded and said, however, there are relatively few and small offices here, so we won't arrange a separate location for you. Just stay there. Qin Shen's gaze turned to the other side, and Gu Yuan followed suit. A brand new small desk was placed diagonally opposite Qin Shen's desk, which was slightly abrupt in the overall structure of the office and looked like a newly installed desk. The things above are quite complete. Gu Yuan accepted everything and said, Thank you very much, General Manager Qin. After speaking, Gu Yuan sat straight over. Half of the walls of the office are French window. Gu Yuan's position is right opposite to the half of the French window. When you look out, you can see the sunset on the magnificent sea level. Gu Yuan works quietly in her position, keeping the indoor environment quiet. Occasionally, when she looked up at Qin Shen, his gaze remained focused on the official document in front of her, with no distractions. Working until the end of the day, Qin Shen's gaze briefly left the report in front of him. Looking at Gu Yuan over there, he also opened his computer and was seriously looking at things. However, in an instant, Gu Yuan noticed his gaze and quickly turned his head, saying, Do you have any orders from Mr. Qin? Her eyes were clear, filled with herself, her lips opening and closing slightly, cute and tempting. Qin Shen's mind instantly recalled yesterday afternoon. That hot and fierce kiss. That was a completely instinctive kiss. After work, Qin Shen said casually. Gu Yuan looked up and said, Okay, General Manager Qin. 
Gu Yuan turned off her computer and then took out cleaning tools from the nearby restroom. She simply swept the floor, tidied up the garbage, and then came to tidy up her desk to help Qin Shinshir organize his documents. Upon discovering that he had been reading the report all afternoon, he asked, Has Mr. Qin finished reading it? Gu Yuan stood next to Qin Shinshir, with a faint fragrance lingering on her nose as she bent down. Qin Shinshir's eyes flickered slightly. Gu Yuan's waist was bulging in front of him. Qin Shin only felt a surge of qi and blood. He pursed his lips tightly. Gu Yuan tilted her head and looked directly at Qin Shen, saying, Mr. Qin. I've finished reading. Qin Shen answered quickly, then stood up and left the office. Gu Yuan collected the report and placed it in a specific folder, then locked it in the bookshelf behind her desk. She knew all the habits of Qin Shen's time, so even in this unfamiliar environment, Gu Yuan could tidy up the office properly. After finishing her work, Gu Yuan walked out of the CEO's office but didn't see Fu Qingxiao. Just as she was about to call Fu Qingxiao, she saw a small head protruding from the room at the corner of the corridor. Fu Qing widened his eyes with a smile, then extended another hand and frantically waved to Gu Yuan. Gu Yuan walked over helplessly. Fu Qing smiled and blinked his lively and playful eyes. At this moment, she had changed into a new outfit, a tulip-printed square neck dress, two delicate arms under the chiffon half-sleeves, and she had also let down her hair. She was completely different from the rigorous secretary who had just handled things. Now, Fu Qingxiao is like a cute sister next door. Fu Qingxiao took Gu Yuan's arm and said, Hu Hu. It's finally time to finish work. What should we go eat, Yuan Yuan? There's a local restaurant nearby that's quite delicious, or do you want to eat hot pot, Yuan Yuan Yuan? Fu Qing smiled and opened his eyes wide. I remember you used to love eating hot pot the most. After being used to eating Western cuisine for a few years abroad, you have forgotten about the delicacies of Greater China, right? Gu Yuan couldn't help but say, I haven't forgotten. Then go eat hot pot. Fu Qing smiled and blinked. Gu Yuan nodded and said, Okay. But there should be another person. Before she could finish her words, Fu Qing Xiao pulled her out at a sprint speed of 100 meters and headed straight for the elevator. She took advantage of the fact that there were not many people taking the elevator to get off work and sat down. Until the hot pot restaurant, Fu Qingxiao never gave Gu Yuan a chance to speak again. After sitting down, Fu Qingxiao arranged to order food. After ordering, she seemed to have just come back to her senses and asked, Ah. What do you mean, Yuan Yuan? There's still one person left. Small theater. Mr. Qin. I have to be able to coax Yuan Yuan and bring Yuan Yuan to meet old friends. Fu Qing Xiao. Let me assist. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. Old Acquaintance, 3. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 8 Old Acquaintance, 3. Gu Yuan couldn't help but rub Fu Qing Xiao's head. The other person's expression was silly and a bit cute, making it impossible for her to say a word of blame. You know me too, Gu Yuan said as her phone rang. Gu Yuan continued, Xiaoya, where have you been? The female voice on the other side of the receiver remained silent. I just got off the car, I'll be there in three minutes. Upon hearing Gu Yuan's words, Fu Qingxiao paused in his heart and said, Xiaoya. Are you talking about Xiaoya? Gu Yuan nodded and confirmed Fu Qingxiao's words, yes. Fu Qingxiao's eyes suddenly turned red again, and this time the tears came even more fiercely. Not in the company, she cried out loud. Fortunately, they were in a private room without anyone else, otherwise they would definitely have caught everyone's attention. Gu Yuan quickly comforted and said, What's going on? Fu Qing chuckled and whimpered, They're all gone. They're all gone. Don't even want me. Gu Yuan was taken aback and said, Xiaoya hasn't contacted you in these years. Fu Qing laughed and burst into tears, 
her voice containing great grievances. No. Gu Yuan frowned slightly. The three of them had the best time back then. Unexpectedly, after she went abroad, neither of them contacted Fu Qingxiao again, leaving her alone for so many years. She used to be involuntary. Why is Xiaoya also? Bu Xiaoya pushed open the door to the private room of the hot pot restaurant. I thought it was only Gu Yuan, but I didn't expect to hear a familiar voice. The girl was hiding in Gu Yuan's arms crying. Bu Xiaoya's footsteps suddenly stopped, standing at the door in a dilemma. Gu Yuan. Xiaoya. Bu Xiaoya had no choice but to come in. Fu Qing smiled and cried until his eyes blurred. When he looked up at Bu Xiaoya, he only saw a patch of green. She tried to wipe away her tears before she could see Bu Xiaoya clearly. The girl in front of her is full of heroism, with sharp short hair that can only reach behind her ears. Her skin tone is slightly wheat colored, and her lips are particularly pale. She is sharp and pursed into a straight line, and her eyes are slightly dilated. Her black pupils are particularly deep. And she was still wearing a whole set of green military uniforms and black military boots, looking stuffy and hot. Fu Qin was stunned with a smile. She had planned to cry again and beg for some comfort in Bu Xiaoya's arms, but found that the person across from her was far from what she remembered. Bu Xiaoya also stood half a meter away from Fu Qingxiao, not moving any further. In those clear black eyes, there was a hint of confusion and unbearable feeling. Gu Yuan said, Xiaoya has gone to serve in the military for these years. When I came back, I contacted her and she only took some time out of it. Today, she happened to have a mission in the Shanghai market. Bu Xiaoya pulled open the chair next to her and sat down, with a hint of sadness between her eyebrows and eyes. Hm Qing Xiao, it's not that I haven't been able to contact you these years. My identity is quite special, she said she is concise and clear, and she is completely different from the girl in her memory. Fu Qing's tears turned into a trickle as she smiled and said, everyone carries me on their backs. At least Yuan Yuan knows that she has gone abroad. How did you join the army? Bu Xiaoya said, if I don't have any other hobbies, I'll give it a try to become a soldier. The three people met again after a long separation. They were all sisters with deep feelings for each other. They could not help but blush when they looked at each other. Fu Qing smiled and wiped away her tears, saying, eat hot pot. During the banquet, Fu Qing, who had just cried the most, had the most jokes. He caught Gu Yuan and Bu Xiaoya and asked them one by one about the recent situation. After many questions, Fu Qingxiao felt relieved after confirming that sisters had not suffered too much in recent years, and then the topic turned to Fu Qing looked at Gu Yuan with a smirk and a mischievous expression on his face, saying, Yuan Yuan, there are quite a few beautiful men abroad, haven't you seen them? Gu Yuan reached out her chopsticks and picked up a large piece of hairy belly. No, she said Fu Qing smiled and widened his eyes, no way. My kite treasure. She looked up and down at Gu Yuan again, making a clicking sound. Faced with a top-dot-notch goddess like Gu Yuan, how could no handsome man capture Yuan Yuan's heart? My best friend's agreement. Don't deceive anyone. Fu Qing said with a serious smile, everyone should honestly explain whether they have been in love. We have talked a few times. Faced with Fu Qingxiao's aggressiveness, Bu Xiaoya mercilessly commented, childish. Although she spoke harshly, Bu Xiaoya still picked a freshly cooked bell roll filled with red oil from Fu Qingxiao's bowl. Fu Qingxiao immediately breathed a sigh of relief, then puffed his cheeks and retorted, I'm not childish. Hey! By the way, Yaya! Fu Qing smiled and frowned at Bu Xiaoya, there should also be quite a few in the army. Brother Sunshine! Just like my big brother! Oh! Bu Xiaoya couldn't bear to hear Fu Qing Xiao continue speaking, so she gave Fu Qing Xiao a surprise. Fu Qing Xiao looked at Gu Yuan with grievances. The latter said indifferently, naivety. 
Xiao Ya is right. Fu Qing Xiao pouted and said, You guys are not childish. Hmph. I'm already 20.6. Isn't it normal to think about these things? Speaking of this, Fu Qingxiao's mood clearly subsided. My mother urges me to go on blind dates every day, asking me to get married early. Fortunately, my brother hasn't found his sister dot in dot law yet, otherwise I wouldn't have had a shield. Fu Qing looked up with a smile and questioned, What about you? Isn't your family urging you? Bu Xiaoyao. Men will only affect my promotion. Fu Qingxiao turned his head to look at Gu Yuan. A hint of abnormality flashed between Gu Yuan's eyebrows, but his carelessness, like Fu Qing's smile, did not make him feel anything different from before. He looked at Gu Yuan with a hopeful expression on his face. Gu Yuan said, I don't have any ideas in this regard. Fu Qingxiao felt even sadder and said, Why did I have the most miserable life? Feeling sad, I made several slices of fat lamb rolls again. Bu Xiaoya did not follow them to the end of the meal. After eating half full, she received a phone call and then left. Fu Qing smiled and looked at the back of Bu Xiaoya as she left. In the past, Bu Xiaoya was not like this, with long hair and a love for wearing sweet dresses. She looked beautiful like a ballet dancer on a music box. Now, Bu Xiaoya has been trained hard in the military, her skin is not as fair as before, and she has become a bit dark. Her long sleeved pants cannot block her faintly explosive muscles, making her very handsome. Her stunned appearance was very cute. Bu Xiaoya couldn't help but stop her steps and reached out to touch Fu Qingxiao's head, saying, There will be more opportunities in the future. The girl's palms were wide and thick, and the rough cuffs of her military uniform gently brushed against Fu Qingxiao's forehead. After touching it, Bu Xiaoya left the private room. Leave Fu Qingxiao and Gu Yuan to continue rinsing all the remaining meat until their stomachs are smooth and round. After putting down the chopsticks, Fu Qing smiled and remembered, By the way, Yuan Yuan, why are you also working in Qin Ji's company now? You even became Qin Ji's secretary. At that time, Fu Qingxiao was once worried about their relationship. Later, when Gu Yuan went abroad, Fu Qing laughed and thought they would never communicate again. Unexpectedly, Gu Yuan became Qin Shen's secretary again. End of this chapter Chapter 9 New Home You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 New Home A worker, Gu Yuan replied, Always only the boss picks the secretary, no secretary picks the boss. Fu Qingxiao suddenly realized. After the two had finished their meal, Fu Qingxiao learned during the banquet that Gu Yuan was currently staying in a hotel and insisted on introducing him to a house. He took Gu Yuan's hand and went to see the house. Fu Qingxiao drove Gu Yuan to Xinhua Port. This is the closest and best community to the city center. Gu Yuan had previously considered this area, but the housing is scarce and there has been no way out. Fu Qingxiao explained, who told you not to contact us earlier? With me, Fu Qingxiao, what can't be done? This house is bought by my father's friend's child, but that person has too many properties and enjoys them. They would rather drive an extra half an hour back to the seaside villa, and the houses here have been idle. Gu Yuan still had some doubts and said, How did you know? Fu Qin smiled triumphantly and raised his chin, Of course I just asked. Gu Yuan frowned. Fu Qin Xiao picked up her phone and showed it to her. The WeChat group name is Shanghai Flower Alliance. About an hour and a half ago, when Fu Qin Xiao at the dinner table learned that Gu Yuan didn't have a house to live in, she asked in the group and quickly received a reply. This group is all friends who have played well in Shanghai. You should also know some of them, Fu Qing smiled. When Gu Yuan followed Qin Shen back then, he did know all the people in the circle of the second generation in Beijing Gu Yuan glanced and indeed saw many familiar names. The house is on the 15th floor. This floor height is the most suitable for living. 
There are a huge French window in front of the living room and a garden balcony. The overall decoration of the house is simple and grand, but the warm French lamps and the right couch for lazy people reveal warmth everywhere. It is indeed a house suitable for young people to live in. Overall, Gu Yuan's heart is not good. This is indeed what she wants. She is very satisfied with the house Fu Qingxiao couldn't tell how pleased Gu Yuan was, so she quickly took her hand and said, How about it? How about staying here? It's so dangerous for you to stay in a hotel every day, and there's no smell of home at all. I think this place is quite good, Gu Yuan couldn't resist Fu Qing's enthusiastic smile. After thinking for a moment, she thought it was indeed her own gain, so she replied, Okay. Okay. Then you can stay in today. I really can't see you stay any longer in that inhumane hotel. Fu Qing said with a smile of grievance. Stay today. Gu Yuan frowned. It's not very convenient, is it? Fu Qing smiled and blinked, why isn't it convenient? Look here. The cleanliness and hygiene are done by a fixed ant every week, clean and tidy, and you can easily check in with your bags. Besides, how much luggage can you have in your hotel? You've only been back to China for a month, and you haven't gone out with us. There must be no two beautiful dresses. I'll accompany you to the hotel to pack up everything in a while. This is Xinghua Harbor, and the security is good. It must be much safer than the hotel you're staying at. Yuan Yuan, you can't refuse me. I've already sent out all my messages and agreed. Fu Qing smiled quickly with a ghost horse spirit. Gu Yuan couldn't resist her and nodded. Okay. I'll give my friend a call and ask him to confirm, and then have someone tell the butler later that they have the authority to open a tenant for you. We can complete all the procedures tonight. Gu Yuan was simply led by Fu Qingxiao to run, but in just two hours, everything was taken care of. Fu Qing smiled mischievously and said, Is Yuan Yuan afraid or not? Do you want me to sleep with you for the night? Gu Yuan raised the corner of her mouth slightly and said, You should be careful when driving at night. Fu Qingxiao left happily. Gu Yuan turned around and the room remained calm. Babies, please review the previous chapter and update it with 1000 words. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 New Clothes, 1. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 New Clothes, 1. It's an unfamiliar field, and Gu Yuan didn't have any unexpected insomnia. The scenery in the bedroom is excellent, creating a relatively broad view amidst the towering buildings. At this time of night, the bright moon hangs high, and half of the moonlight shines into the room. Gu Yuan was wearing a thin summer camisole nightgown, made of silk material, tightly attached to her body. There happened to be a full-body mirror by the window beside the bed, and the woman in the mirror had an excellent figure under the moonlight. Gu Yuan hesitated for a moment, then took out her phone to check the time. Tomorrow happens to be the weekend, so you don't have to work. Gu Yuan didn't feel sleepy, so she sat up and made a phone call. Iris. A surprised voice came from the other end of the phone. Gu Yuan smiled and said, May. Iris. Why did you resign so quickly at that time? May said in American English, I happened to be on vacation and couldn't even attend your resignation party. May's voice was filled with regret, but her voice quickly rose again. So, my beautiful Iris, you're calling. If you're not as I expected, you're asking me about that, right? Gu Yuan nodded and said, yes. I have been back to my home country for a month now, and I was also in a hurry to resign at that time, so I couldn't personally handle many procedures. I think it has been almost a month now, and I don't know how things are progressing on your end. May smiled and said, your phone call came too coincidentally. Just a minute ago, I received an email from the bank and all the approvals have been completed. Thank you very much, Gu Yuan thanked her. Iris, are you really not planning to come back after you go home this time? May asked, even though your work here is thriving, 
the boss appreciates you very much. Even if he knows you are doing something else outside, he has never said anything and is willing to help you. As far as I know, you should be carefree in China. Thank you for your kindness, Gu Yuan said. However, I have already thought about it. Since that's the case, I wish you all the best in your career in China. Mei stopped persuading and sincerely wished Gu Yuan the best. Gu Yuan nodded and said, Okay, I wish you all the best today. Hanging up the phone, Gu Yuan felt a stone fall in her heart. Gu Yuan studied business abroad and worked hard in the school club. Later, she smoothly joined a well-known company and won three major business orders, becoming the new king. Later, she was promoted all the way and became a special assistant to the CEO. She quickly entered the class with an annual salary of 1 million. In addition, Gu Yuan was not satisfied. He worked almost during the day and worked overtime at night, starting investment projects with the capital, and the returns were also very good. In the end, he even developed a small company. It was precisely this confidence that shook Gu Yuan's mind when he saw the secretary recruitment of Qin's company. Gu Yuan pays close attention to domestic economic news. That man has lost his childishness and every move carries the mature and steady sexiness of a mature man. She thought it was time to come back. Asterisk waking up on Saturday, Gu Yuan didn't feel relaxed either. After thoroughly cleaning the house, Gu Yuan quickly changed her clothes and went out. She took a car at the entrance of the community and headed straight to the mall. Last night, Fu Qingxiao was right. She really doesn't have much clothes to wear now, especially on Monday night when she is going to attend a charity dinner with Qin Xinxia. She needs to buy a suitable little dress. As soon as Gu Yuan walked into the door of the V family, the salesperson suddenly approached with a bright light. End of this chapter